Hello and welcome to the Vector Virtual Session TSN Features Approach and Networks. Are you prepared? My name is Christoph Renkel and I work at Vector as a software development engineer. In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about measurement and simulation in time-sensitive networks. We will have a look at the impact of a tool on a time-sensitive network and how the tool is required to behave so it does not disturb the network. I will then show you how vector tools can be used for measurement and simulation in this context before I conclude with a few remarks. I would like to start with a brief introduction to time-sensitive networking. I think for some of you this is going to be a review, but it's a good baseline. And if you attended this event two years ago, some things might sound familiar as a colleague of mine gave a similar talk. However, please stay tuned, especially when looking at measurement and simulation um, in time-sensitive networks using vector tools. We will go a little bit more into detail. I would like to start with a simple example to describe challenges in standard Ethernet networks and where the necessity for time-sensitive networking arises from. On the right-hand side of the slide, you can see a example network. Um, two cameras and an ECU are connected to an Ethernet switch. The cameras are sending data to the ECU, probably in bursts of frames at image acquisition, and possibly both cameras are transmitting data at the same time which would be the worst case in this scenario as it leads to a temporary oversubscription of the uplink. Packets must then be buffered in the switch. Potentially they are dropped if additional traffic is mixed in and the buffer runs out. And it's hard to tell what's happening on the, on the uplink. So I try to um, depict the scenario without um, additional traffic on the bottom part of the slide. You can see two streams which correspond to the two cameras. Each of these boxes represents a burst of frames, and these bursts are entering the switch at the same time. So now the switch is doing its best to um, switch the frames to the egress port. And on the uplink, um, we will end up with interleaving of frames of both streams. The streams are getting stretched out in time. And if, if we consider now additional traffic, we cannot really tell what is happening here. So we cannot tell if data will be received in time or if important packets will be dropped. This is particularly challenging in automotive Ethernet since streams might be real-time, they might be critical, and we would like to have a predictable network, ideally a deterministic network. And this is where time-sensitive networking is used. The time-sensitive networking standards define mechanisms to account for the non-deterministic behavior of the underlying network. Um, Within the standards and technologies, I would like to break things up into two areas, which is time synchronization and mechanisms for bounded latency, such as queuing or shaping. And out of a long list of standards, I would like to highlight the following ones. Uh, time synchronization is specified in IEEE 1588 and IEEE 802.1 AS. These standards define mechanisms to synchronize time in the network so that all elements of the network share a common time base. Another group of standards I would like to briefly mention is um, IEEE 802.1Q, which defines bridges and bridge networks. Different kind of shapers are defined in substandards, such as QAV or QBV. There are many more, but I tend not to go through them. I just wanted to mention them as we will talk about shapers in this presentation. Now let's apply TSN mechanisms to our example from the beginning. Um, all elements in the network are time synchronized and therefore the cameras, the switch and the ECU share a common time base. The cameras may transmit the image data at the same time or interlaced, which is possible now after time synchronization. In this example, let's assume that they are still transmitting at the same time. Also, some non-time aware low prior low priority traffic is, is mixed in. And the switch is now configured to forward certain streams in scheduled time slots, which is uh, referred to as a time aware shaper. The low priority traffic fills the gaps and therefore does not impact um, the time sensitive data. And the allocated slots ensure reception of the image data in time, which is critical in controlled real time systems. So to sum things up, by synchronizing time in the network, we could configure the camera to transmit the data interlaced. This would be a simple solution if there was, uh, if there was no low priority traffic. The example shows that we can use a shaper to prioritize critical traffic. 
This way our network will behave predictable even if data rates get near the available bandwidth. In the example we looked at a time over shaper which ensures time del uh, data delivery at a certain time. There are other shapers like uh, credit based shapers which can be used to smooth out bursty traffic or a simple strict priority shaper but uh, we won't cover them in this talk. So this was a very simple, very uh, brief introduction to time sensitive networking. I would now like to look at tool implications um, for time sensitive networks. When bringing a tool into a time sensitive network, the tool must not cause a failure of the TSN mechanisms. Um, and I would like to look at the tool implications with regard to time synchronization and queuing and shaping. I would like to discuss um, two ways of placing a tool in a time-sensitive network, a tap configuration and a switched connection. Generally, the elements in the network need to continue to synchronize time, so the tool needs to be transparent to the time synchronization. And synchronizing time relies on two procedures which are performed cyclically. Um, there is a measurement of the end-to-end -end or peer-to-peer -peer path delay between the network elements um, that are synchronizing time. And the master tells the time or tells its time to the slaves so the slave can synchronize to that time. So now let's have a look at the tap. So the tap receives and retransmits um, the frames. So it adds a constant delay to the path and this does not impact time synchronization. So time synchronization will continue to function when inserting a tap. Things are a little bit more different when, when adding a switch um, to the network because um, the switch does not add a constant delay, but rather a variable delay, which is referred to as the residence time. And roughly speaking, the residence time is the time it takes a packet to pass through the switch. And this residence time must be compensated. We then talk about a transparent clock. So the residence time is measured and then written into the corresponding fields of PTP frames. Um, and then the residence time is taken into account by the sync algorithm. Another option would be to configure the switch as a boundary clock. It would then actively participate in time synchronization. In, in both ways, time synchronization would continue to function. Now let's have a look at, at queuing and shaping. Um, I, I, I depicted a very, or I depict a very um, simple example on the right hand side of the slide. A tool connects directly to an ECU, which would be the case, for example, in a RESPA simulation. It could also connect to a whole network, but uh, yeah, in this case, it's just one ECU. The goal is um, to stimulate the external element, so the ECU, in a time-sensitive manner. So basically what we, want to, what we want to do is we want to emulate shaped traffic on this connection. And for example, if we, if we want to emulate a time where shaper, then the tool needs to be synchronized to the network. So time synchronization is performed in the simulation. Another, th another thing we need to consider is that the tool might run in a non-real-time environment. So it must account for the indeterministic behavior of the operating system. The tool must implement um, traffic identification, prioritization, and of course, shaping. And this must be configurable without being overly complex. So it matches the customer's application. Now let's extend this example by inserting a switch to the simulation. So now the tool connects to multiple ECUs via the simulated switch. And the simulation shapes traffic on multiple links. The connected ECUs can exchange data over the switch. As we've seen before, um, the switch must either implement a transparent or a boundary clock in order for time synchronization to continue to function. And um, 
the switch must support the customer's use case. So basically it must mimic the behavior of an OEM switch to the extent necessary for the simulation use case. So it must provide uh, traffic identification, prioritization and, and shaping. And if the simulated switch differs in some way from the OEM switch, these potential differences must be well understood by the customer so he can account for it in his, in his measurement setup. So now we looked at um, general tool implications. I would now like to look at simulation and measurement in time-sensitive networks with vector tools. Again, I would like to introduce an example network which consists of three ECUs connected to a time-aware switch. This is not an original topology, um, as the time-aware switch is most likely to be integrated in one of the ECUs. It's just a simple example um, to discuss the three types of tool configurations, which are the tab configuration, the direct link configuration, and the switch configuration. I start with a tab configuration. So on the right-hand side of the slide, you can see the example network at the bottom. And above, there is a tool PC, which connects to a vector network interface via USB. And this network interface is configured to provide a tab. This tab is used to measure the traffic between the time aware switch and ECU A. As we've seen before, um, the tab inserts a constant delay. So time synchronization between the switch and the ECU will continue to function. I'm sure that some of you are skeptical about the delay, as there are applications where the additional delay might be disadvantageous, such as intrusion detection, but generally it should have a minor impact on your measurement scenario, since uh, the application cycle should be much greater than the inserted delay. I think it's important that the customer knows about this delay, so he can decide if, it's, if, if this measurement principle is working for his use case or not. The tab can be used for measurement in time-sensitive networks with currently released solutions by Vector. Now let's move on to the link configuration. Please notice that ECUC is no longer part of the physical example network. The ECU was moved um, to a canoe simulation, which is running on the tool PC. The network interface is used to connect the PC to the network under test. And in this scenario, we do not just measure traffic, but also simulate traffic. So now we need to connect the simulation to the network. And as the simulation is running on a PC, which is typically a non-real-time environment, the network interface provides a deterministic transmit interface. And this deterministic transmit interface uh, accounts for the unpredictable timing behavior of the runtime environment. Let's assume we want to transmit traffic in a time-aware manner between the network interface and the time-aware switch. So now the simulation um, pre-calculates the transmission time of every message of the next network cycle and writes it down to the network interface before it needs to be sent. A time trigger transmit module starts transmission at the specified time. And this approach, um, combined with a hardware implementation that supports prioritization and um, all sorts of transmission selection algorithms, is capable of simulating different kinds of shapers. In our example, where we want to simulate time aware traffic, the simulation is required to be synchronized uh, to the network under test. And this is achieved through, or, or this is supported by precise hardware um, timestamps, which are generated by the network interface and delivered to the simulation. So the simulation can use those timestamps to perform the time synchronization. Solutions for um, time-triggered sending are already available and are used in audio use cases. More TSN-related features will be released in the future. And now I'd like to discuss the switch configuration. Now the switch 
the time aware switch is part of the simulation. As we've seen before, the switch now needs to implement either a transparent clock or a boundary clock in order to support time synchronization. For proper simulation, the switch must also mimic the behavior of an OEM switch. And this can be very challenging for the simulation. And we think it's about finding the happy medium between supporting the standard, but also reducing complexity by distilling the required features for the customer use cases. I want to emphasize that um, the switch is not meant to replace an OEM switch. Usually the switch is, is not used um, in a original topology, but rather in a RESPA simulation scenario with simplified conditions. Nevertheless, the switch must support traffic identification, policing, prioritization, shaping, and must be configured to match the customer's use case. And uh, this time of a switch with time synchronization support and features like polices and shapers will be available in future releases. And this brings me to the end of the presentation, TSN features approach your networks, are you prepared? We have seen that it is essential for the tool to be as transparent as possible, so it does not disturb the network. If there are impacts of the tool on the network, we would like to make sure that these are well understood by the customer. What I would like to emphasize is that we don't want to test the whole standard, but rather use it as an enabler to put a tool in the network. So the tool might not be required to fully support the standard. If you are wondering if your use case can be covered with vector tools, please don't hesitate to contact us. With the currently released version, it's already possible to conduct measurements in time-sensitive networks, and more TSN-related features will be available in future releases. So with that, I would like to end my presentation by thanking you for your attention. I'm looking forward to answer your questions. See you in the Q&A session.